Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, okay, so this is the turn of case study today. And you can see a case study on the screen right now. This is case study relevant to November 2019. And it is relevant to chapter number two. Okay, so I suggest all of you to stop the video and have a look on this case study. You can read this case study and afterwards you can play the video again. And I will also show you the answers for this case study as well. And uh, it is relevant to chapter number two. And uh, this is from microeconomics. Okay, so what is really important here to note down whenever you have to study, you have to solve case study basically. First, read the content carefully and especially have a look on the tables or graphs given in the question, right? And for example, in figure one, you can see we are provided with income elasticity of demand, YAD is income elasticity of demand, and it, its value is plus 1.1. So you must know what this value means. Whenever the value is positive, it means it shows positive relationship between income and quantity demand. So it means if income increases, quantity demand will rise. And the other thing you must know is that uh, only normal goods have income elasticity of demand positive, meaning if income increases, people purchase greater quantity of normal goods. So it means that it will be a normal good. Whatever good is basically mentioned here, its demand will be uh, positive. Income elasticity of demand will be positive. And then you must know what does value 1.1 show. So this is greater than 1. And whenever the value is greater than 1, it means K it would be an elastic demand. So elasticity of demand is positive, one thing. And the other is K it is more elastic, mean greater than 1. Then coming to figure number 2, you must be able to interpret these values as well long distance international business flights minus 0 0.3 so this is less than 1 0.3 is less than 1 all values are negative negative does not mean less than 1 here negative means the relationship will be negative mean if price falls quantity demand will rise this kind of relationship is known as negative relationship or inverse relationship so that's why the value all values are negative here mean price elasticity of demand will be negative so long distance international business flights have value 0.3 mean it is inelastic or less than one. And then coming to the next thing, long distance international leisure flights minus 1.0. It means it is unitary elastic because it is equal to one. And then comes long short distance business flights that is 0 0.7 that is less than one again less than one mean inelastic, then short distance, leisure flights, 1.5 mean it is not greater than one, it will be elastic. So now th this was basic interpretation of these values. Now we can move to the questions. Uh, question number one, part A, subpart one is state the formula used to calculate income elasticity of demand. You must be aware about the formula of income elasticity of demand and formula for income elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demand divided by percentage change in income. So delta sign shows change. So you have to give just this formula and just capture two marks. Okay, so this is the formula given here. And next question is what can be concluded about A travel from figure one. So this is figure one. So this table shows figure one. So it is uh, income elasticity of demand is plus positive. So it means it will be uh, a normal good. So air travel, demand for air travel is a normal good and 1.1 shows that a small change in income will lead to greater change in demand for uh, that is air travel, right? So uh, you can read the answer here and you can stop the video and read it carefully. And now moving to the next question, part B sub part 1 says using figure 2, now the question is relevant to this figure. Explain a likely reason for different price elasticity values for business flights compared with leisure flights. If you see the business flight, one business flight is this one that is inelastic. 
and other business flight is this one that is again inelastic so both are inelastic but uh short distance business flights are relatively elastic because 0.7 is a bit near to 1 so it means it it is inelastic it is also inelastic so both are inelastic but long distance flights are more inelastic and short distance flights are relatively less elastic um okay so um it is near to 1 or it is a bit greater than 0.3 0.7 is greater than 0.3 so it is bit more elastic and it is less elastic and then you can discuss leisure flights one leisure flight is this that is long distance leisure flights so value is 1 and long short distance leisure flight is 1.5 so if we add 1 and 1.5 we will get 2.5 if we get an average so 2.5 divided by 2 will give us 1.25 it is greater than 1 so on average we can say that leisure flights are relatively elastic theek hai ji so you can read the answer here and after reading this you can move to the next question right and the next question is long distance flights compared with short distance flights so long distance flights are these two let me change the color so that i can easily identify it so long distance flights are these two so on average 1 plus 0.3 will give us 1.3 and we can get average so average will be less than 1 and now moving to short distance flights short distance flights are 0.7 and 1.5 cross price elasticity of demand if we add them we will get around 2. uh 2.2 so 2.2 divided by 2 on average we can see answer is 1.1 which means it is greater than 1 so short distance flights are relatively elastic as compared to the long distance flights okay so reasons can be substitutability like short distance flights may have more substitutes and long distance flights may have less substitute and short distance flights uh, are more elastic as compared to long distance flights moving to the next question that is part c explain the significance of price elasticity values in figure 2 for an airline considering a policy of fair cutting so in case of figure 2 uh, you can see different values of price elasticity of demands and fair cutting or price cutting is basically beneficial when price elasticity of demand is elastic in case of elastic demand a little fall in price will lead to greater rise in demand so total revenue increases so fair cutting here fair mean fair cutting mean uh, decrease in uh, fare of basically flights or decrease in ticket prices so if there is fall in price then there will be greater increase in demand if the demand is elastic so revenue will rise and it should never decrease price when demand is inelastic inelastic demand mean the greater fall in price will lead to smaller rise in quantity demand i'm using double arrow for a greater change single arrow for smaller change so total revenue will fall when you decrease price dramatically but demand increases a little bit so your revenue will decrease so fair cutting is beneficial when demand is elastic okay so uh, now you can read the answer for question number part b sub part 2 you can see it right now on the screen Okay so you can read the answer for question number C part C here now and now uh, you can stop the video and read it carefully and now i'm moving to the next question and the last question there is okay discuss the cost and benefits of increased demand for air travel so for discuss question you have to write points for points against and then you have to points for points against and you have to give conclusion as well conclusion so what you will have to do is you will have to talk in favor of the increase in demand for air travel so how it will be beneficial for the economy and then cost mean disadvantages of this basically uh, increased demand for air travel so you will have to talk about the points against this rise in demand and then you will have to give a conclusive statement one mark is fixed for conclusion in this this question part d of case study 
So you can talk about like there are five economic agents in an economy, like consumers, producers, government, workers, and communities. So how these will be affected by the increase in demand for air travel? Uh, examples can be if there is high demand for air travel, definitely more flights will be available to the consumers. And producers will also benefit because uh, airlines will benefit from greater demand. Their revenue may rise, their profitability may rise. They may expand their business and interconnected industries will also be affected like hotel industry. When people are traveling from one country to another country, definitely it results in increase in demand for accommodation. Local transport, demand for local transport will also rise because airports are always outskirts of the town and you have to travel using local transport from uh, airports to the city centers, right? So uh, there are some disadvantages or costs as well because uh, greater demand for air travel means more pollution, air pollution, more noise pollution. And in generally what happens is the areas, top areas near to the airports, the property value decreases. So uh it will be a cost for them so it causes pollution as well deafness may increase for the people living around the airport and these are basically uh, different costs that can be um, that that can be expected so there is short answer given here you can get guidelines from this answer just read it stop the video and read the entire answer you can write more points as well so on average case study is considered to be the difficult and tough topic um, tough par part or section of the paper, but actually it is not. If you deal it technically, then you can score uh, maximum, mark maximum marks out of this case study. So I believe it was helpful for you. If it was, then just thumb up and you may subscribe if you like to. And you can write in the comments if you need any further clarity about this. Or if you want um, me to explain any special case study for you, then let me know the year. I will try to make a video for that as well. And I will also be discussing some other case studies relevant to paper two AS level economics. And mainly I will be focusing one more case study from chapter number two, then chapter number four, two case studies from chapter number four. So mainly case studies are asked from chapter number two or chapter number four. So I will try to cover all kinds of case studies that can help you out. And I will also discuss section B2, inshallah. So see you in the next video. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.